We've gone to study SD 45.9. Panchandika Sada Sutta. The five factor discourse on the faithful. And the, re the Sutta reference is A5.38. And the theme is the five benefits of faith. This Sutta has, has uh, two aspects. One is the wise, faithful person, and the other are the, the object of devotion, like the, the Buddha, the great saints, and the, the good teachers. So, the one with faith benefits from the teachers, and he also benefits others. Here, faith, of course, means wise faith. Avicapasada. Wise faith means a kind of joyful acceptance of the teaching through understanding. When we understand the truth and the beauty of, of the Buddha's teaching, our minds become clear and we brighten up, we are happy. That's the kind of faith we're talking about here. Not blind faith, not the kind of faith that is full of vitriol and and violence. So here is a very peaceful, very joyful faith. You might even say it is the kind of faith that is the basis of whatever is beautiful, of aesthetics, of truth and beauty. And of course, this faith also empowers us, inspires us to meditate to be at peace with ourselves, to be willing and able to look within so that we see all the wonderful qualities and potential within us, to be a good Buddhist, and to awaken in this life at this as a stream winner. So this sutta is uh, addressed to the monks, you know, it's a short sutta given by the Buddha. Although it's addressed by the monks, the key figure here, the protagonist, is a, a son of family, you know, versus a lay person. So although the sutta is addressed to monks, it is also addressed to lay people, like most of us who are listening. Let's go straight to the sutta now, on page 103. The five-factor discourse on the faithful. A5.38 Bhikshu Zara these five benefits of a, for a son of family who is faithful or for a son of family who has faith. Faith in what? The f faith of course in the three jewels, the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. Here, just a, a brief explanation. When we say uh, someone has faith in the three jewels, what does it mean? To have faith in the Buddha means that we understand it is possible for a human being to evolve to be the wisest and the most compassionate of all humans. And uh, that person we call the Buddha and he teaches others this understanding that he has, so that we too can be free from suffering, as he himself is. In short, to have faith in the Buddha means to have faith in the ability of humans, despite our frailties and weaknesses, to rise by ourselves, to cultivate ourselves through self-reliance, through self-effort, to attain the divine, to cultivate divine qualities within us, not outside of us, not out there, but to cultivate these divine qualities within us so that we rise to the divine level <coughs> and beyond. So, uh, and that's called awakening. So if you like, you can say the first, uh, the first faith or the faith in the Buddha means faith in the awakened one possibility of a human to awaken, to 
full liberation. Wise way to the Dharma means there is a method taught by the Buddha, and this method works. We have faith in this teaching, the, the Buddha's teaching, the, the, the true Dharma, if you like, Satamma. And uh, if we truly have faith in, in the Buddha's true Dharma, we will not change it. We will not edict it and, rev and revise it in such a way as to introduce new things, other, so many other numerous Buddhas and Bodhisattvas which the Buddha never talked about. Of course, we can take all these things as literature, as beautiful culture, yes, but we have to understand it to be, to be those. Whereas the Buddha's teachings recorded in the early texts are very simple, very direct, very clear in their purpose. So we are faith in the Dharma means we understand and accept these teachings as they are, and we know that practicing these teachings through our own effort, we can attain at least strengthening in this life itself. We don't need, if we are not inclined to, to, for example, become Buddhas in the future or, or wait for some future Buddhas to come. We don't have to do that. There's no such teaching in the Buddha's uh, teachings. But if we make this effort to cultivate now, if we are on impermanence, for example, we can attain stream winning in this life itself. Then we have faith in the Dharma. Faith in the Sangha means we accept the fact that there, there were and there are and there will be saints, those who follow the path and have awakened before us, and even today have awakened, and in the future will awaken by way of this true teaching. Although we may not meet them personally at this point because we have not attained that level, we, we know that because this method is so clear and present to us that those kinds of wonderful beings have existed and they can exist and will come in the future too. This is the faith in the Sangha. You might even say faith in stream winning if you like, because a stream winner is a member of the noble Sangha. Here we're not talking about the conventional Sangha, we're talking about the spiritual, you know, the noble Arya Sangha. So these are the, the three jewels in which we should have wise faith. So if we have, if we are this kind of person, we are said to be a son or daughter of good family who is faithful. Now the Sutta continues, Bhikshus, when the good true individuals in the world show compassion, they would surely show compassion first to the faithful, not the faithless. So who are these good true individuals? Santo Purisa. Here a very interesting word, Santo, although there's a whole and there's a plural, and the Purisa individuals. Individuals who are at peace with themselves. Santo can also mean that, at peace. Santo can also mean good. So I've translated as the good, true individuals. So purisa here I take as true individuals because the Purisa here stands for sub -purisa. Here, of course, the, uh, this wonderful individual, the very first, of course, the Buddha. If he's around, still alive, he would be the very first person in this category. Then comes the saints. And then those who are virtuous individuals, another Dharma who teach us the Dharma. In the home, our virtuous parents are such individuals too. And also, more broadly, people who are good and accepted so by the public. So we have this kind of pyramid of these uh, good people, if you like. So it, it, if we have faith in the three jewels here, of, of course it's the Buddhist context, then those saints and teachers who, are, who truly love Dharma will remember us, will know us. And when they do visit our area, they will show compassion to us. Here one example is they don't have to 
visit us or they do not have to ask us to come and see them but they will do that that's out of compassion when approaching they would surely first approach the faithful not the faithless such good to individuals will approach the faithful because the faithful are ready and welcome this good people when receiving gifts or alms they would surely receive from the faithful not the faithless but here of course right, this uh, good to individuals refers to the, the true renunciants who depend on us for alms and when we we do give they will, they will ready, readily accept the offerings. When, the, when teaching Dharma, they would surely teach Dharma to the faithful, not the faithless. So this is where, in other words, we always have this opportunity to hear the good Dharma. And they, since they know that we are regular listeners of the Dharma, our level of Dharma is there, so they might, in the proper time, go deeper into the teachings so that we benefit from such teachings to help our practice. When the body is broken up after death, the faithful is reborn in a happy destination in heaven. Right? So the first four are what are called the visible benefits. And the last one is the future benefit. That. So the first four benefits, because we uh, have done all these wonderful things, you know, keeping the precepts, cultivating wisdom. So this karma helps us to be reborn in a happy state. If not in heaven, in a happy kind of environment, happy life here on earth itself, where we can we have access to the Dharma, we can continue our practice of the Dharma, continue our Dharma work. So that's the meaning of a happy destiny after death. This have, wherever we go, there is this heavenly life around us. Now then the Sutta takes a very interesting twist. This time the Sutta, the Buddha talks about the person who has faith, the benefit that he gives others. Section 3 says, Big Shoes, just as in some pleasant place where four highways meet, a great banyan tree is a refuge for winged creatures all around. Even so, Big Shoes, the son, so the son of family with faith is a refuge for many people, for monks, for nuns, for laymen, for laywomen. So here, what does it mean? this uh, wonderful person with faith is a refuge to us. We've, we know there are only three refuges, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, but of course here refuge means a place of solace, a place where we go to and we can see the three jewels there being spoken of in a very wholesome way. In other words, this wonderful person with faith is a refuge because when we go to him, our faith also will grow. Our good karma also will grow. In that sense. So in other words, he's a true practitioner. He's like this big banyan tree. The banyan tree is used because it is the most spreading tree in India. You can sometimes it is said that the, the, the roots can grow for a long way and that the creating a great shadow, a great shade for animals to stay away from the hot sun, even from people also. And of course the birds. So the sutta ends there, and then there is the verse. Sakha pata palu peto kandi mawa maha dumo mulawa pala sampano patita hoti pakina Branches ripe with leaves and fruits, a mighty tree with a great trunk, with roots and doubt laden with fruit where the winged roost. Manu rame ayatane se wanti nang vihangama, chayang chayatika yanti, 
Palatta Pala Bojino. The realm that delights the heart, the sky goes resort there. Seeking shade, they go for shade. Seeking fruits, they enjoy the fruits. So here these two verses talk about the, the parable, the beautiful parable of the Panjan tree representing the lay practitioner with faith, who is a refuge to others. So this is where when we need shade, we go to him for shade. It means we need solace, we go to him for solace, for counsel. When we want to listen to the Dharma and create our own good karma, we can go to him too. Tatewa sila sampanang sabdang purisa pokalang niwata wutting atatang soratang sakilang mudung. Even so is one accomplished in moral virtue, an individual who is faithful, humble by nature, not self centered, meek, congenial, or soft spoken, mild. So here is where we find this uh, wonderful practicing Buddhist with faith is someone approachable, gentle, kind, compassionate person. So in other words, in a word he is very approachable. We can always go to him. He's always available, so to speak, always accessible. Te tasa dhammang de senti sapa dukha panu. Oh, sorry, verse 7. Verse 7. Vita raga vita do so vita mo. I'll read that again. Vita raga vita do sa vita moha anasava. Punyak ketani lokas ming se wanti tadisan ram. Rit of lust, rit of hate, rit of delusion, influx free. A feel of merit in the world, the associate is such a man. Okay, here uh, uh, we are talking about the, the, the arahats, the saints, they are free from great head delusion. Of course, this also can refer to the lay practitioner who was rid of all this uh, negative and wholesome traits too. But here, they can mean all of us. We take refuge in the Sangha that is free of the great hatred tradition. Such a man here, yeah, of course, can refer to the Arahat, to the Buddha, or to this wonderful lay person with faith who is also very virtuous. Te tasa dhammang de senti sapa dukha panu danang yang so dhammang idan nyaya parinipati anasavoti. To him they teach the Dharma that dispels all suffering. Who here having known that Dharma is totally cool, influx free. Right, so here. Whether it's the Buddha, the, the saints, or the wonderful lay practitioners, when they teach the Dharma, this Dharma clears away, helps to clear away our suffering. And if we listen carefully, respectfully, intelligently to this teaching, we will be clear of our, the roots of suffering, the fires of great hate delusion will be extinguished, will be cool then we will overcome all the mental influxes, all those things that cause us to suffer and to be born again and again, and we will be, we will awaken in this life itself. So the sutta ends there. It's a short and sweet sutta, talking about a person with faith. A person with faith benefits from the Buddha, the great saints, or the other good teachers they will come and teach him. Such a wonderful lay person who also has great faith benefits others also, people like us. 
Of course, we can be that person too if we practice respect and aspire to attain spiritual awakening in this life itself. And now let us spend a short moment to reflect. Whenever we hear the Dharma, we are reminded to aspire towards awakening in this life itself. Because if we do not do this, then our chances of being reborn in a happy state is very slim. And if we are reborn in any unhappy states, we will not hear the Dharma or meet with the saints. So, reflecting on the Dharma, reflecting on impermanence, practicing the precepts, keeping to the teaching helps us to keep moving towards the path to awakening. Reflecting in this way is wonderful good karma, but the power of such karma may we have the strength and courage and wisdom to aspire to stream winning in this life itself. By all this good karma too, maybe we will be well and happy here and now. And also by this same token, by all the good deeds we have done through the three jewels, let us send out our loving kindness to all the people here, to all the beings here, that they may be well and happy. To our loved ones, to those who have supported us and are kind to us, those who have taught us the Dharma, that they may be well and happy. And also, by the power of the three jewels and all the good we have done, may those whom the Dharma have not touched to be touched by the Dharma, and that they may see the Dharma in this life itself. May all beings be well and happy. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.